everyone. This is Tim Rhea reporting for Digital Health Live. Uh, we're going to go and meet probably one of the most interesting entrepreneurs I've met in a, in a long time, uh, Sonny Vu, who's a co-founder and CEO of Misfit Wearables. Hey, Sonny. <laughs> Hi, how you doing? Good, good. So I heard you were just in uh, Seoul a couple days ago. I was. We were just there to talk to uh, some partners there. Nice, nice. So we just had a pre-conference, and um, you're going to be speaking at the Super Session, uh, the Digital Health Revolution, Mind, Body, and Soul. Ariana Huffington will be there. You just said you had a conference call with Deepak Chopra. Um, so it's going to be a fantastic session. Super excited for that. Um, and I was just you're just telling me about how you had the world's first hardware developed and sold in the App Store, a glucose meter. It's a, it's kind of been a sorted past almost. You know, I did a um, I dropped out of uh, my PhD at MIT uh, where I was uh, doing computational linguistics. I know kind of random field. Uh, started my first company uh, in natural language processing, and we sold that to a search engine at the time. Um, and it was a failure, you know. Um, but I learned a lot from it. Went tried to go back to school. Dropped out again, mm -hmm. uh, so I'm a double dropout really, um, to start my 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 last company, which made uh, glucose meters and strips. I started it with my um, a friend I actually knew since the, and since high school. Actually, we were mm -hmm. college roommates, um, and he was the guy who actually talked me out of doing a, a major in in, the, in fine arts. Uh, and I think I'm grateful, but I'm not sure. Anyways, we we did our matrix together, and we the last thing we did uh, was a glucose meter that works with the iPhone. And it is the world's first hardware medical device that works with the iPhone, designed to work with the iPhone. Um, uh, we, we, made, we made the product for Sanofi, which is a big uh, drug company, as you know. And now that product's being sold in the Apple Store. It's, uh, I believe it's one of the first, it's, it's the first and if not the only uh, class two hardware medical device sold in the Apple Store. And uh, it's been doing great. People love the product. Um, and I think the best thing about it was it, made, it enabled people to test uh, and get their, their blood sugars right on an iPhone. And we were just having a conversation about user-centric design and consumerization of IT and products. And now that's uh, kind of going into the healthcare space. And, and as a tip to entrepreneurs, you had some great tips on product design. Let's go into that. Yeah, absolutely. You know, um, if we're going to take this whole consumerization of medicine and, um, uh, you know, accountable care, uh, being uh, care being pushed to the end user preventative medicine, if we're going to take any of that seriously, it has to start with user centric design. And people, and we as makers, have to take that very seriously. You know, we can't take the mindset of, hey, let's, we can do this. We have technology and science for this. Now let's get people to use it, and then do tests on usability. Can it be used? All of those. Are, I, I think that's the wrong approach. Um, I mean, just because it can be used doesn't doesn't mean people want to use it. You know, we want. I mean, uh, you know. So the, the, there's a big gap between that, that, that kind of thinking. You know, I think so. The approach we've taken at Misfit Wearables has been to start with what would, what would people like. Um, you know, the, our approach has been. Let's be a user ourselves. Let's watch users. Let's design it. Try to sell it. And if, if people like it, make it as fast as we can. Um, and honestly, if you can't make something that people really want, uh, we got to invent new technologies to make it happen. And if we can't do that, then let's do something else. You know, we can't like with sensors. You know, the thinking has been let's start with oh, we got these awesome sensors. It can sense this. It's really accurate. Now let's make people wear it. We'll they'll strap it to them, you know, like on their chest or whatever. Mm -hmm. I'm like, that is not the way. To do it. <laughs> let's 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 start with like stuff that people wear. Yeah. You know. So um you're you're going over some new products and, and you're able to really innovate in taking data out and really expanding the use of that data. What's what is kind of your secret sauce and what you guys is what's your secret uh, sauce? You know, honestly data is, is really cool, but you gotta get the data first, okay? And just because people can wear it doesn't mean they're they're going to wear it. So we actually focus on wearability. Mm -hmm. You want you know, why do you wear stuff? You wear stuff because it makes you feel good, it's comfortable to wear, mm -hmm. it has a maybe it has a good purpose. Um but generally you you wear things because it makes you feel good. And so like wearing plastic, that's the world <laughs> of wearables right now. No one wears I bet you're not wearing anything made of plastic right now. Like l unless you're wearing one um you know, a, a watch or something that's made out of uh, plastic. Okay? Yeah. But generally, people wear cotton, leather, 
ceramics, metal, precious metals, precious stones. That's what you normally wear, right? Yeah, and it's almost like some stuff can be a fashionable item but be a sensor at the same time, right? Yeah, exactly. So we started out with like it's got to what the, what it's got to look like and what it's got to be made of, and then we had to overcome all the engineering challenges. I mean, I've got the shine on right now. Okay, it, so that's it. That's it, and it's. I mean, that doesn't. I mean, does that look like a, a an electronic device to you? Yeah, no, it looks like some kind of trick wash. Yeah, it looks like a little. I mean, look how thin it is. I'm going to take it off here. I mean, that's so it, man. What is in that? You know, and then when you shake it. I don't know if you can see yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, the lights are coming on. Yeah, that basically tells me how well I'm doing. Oh, like, really? So you have some bio, some feedback right there. Yep, it gives you instant feedback on how much activity you've had for the day. And that's it. Like, we want it to be discreet. We want it to be beautiful, desirable to wear. And I think those are really important considerations. And you have yeah. an Indiegogo campaign for that right now. Is that we what did. We did. We launched it on Indiegogo to try to see whether people would pay for this or not, whether people are interested in this product. And we've been blown away, to be honest. Really? Like we had no idea. We set our funding goals at 100k, uh -huh. and uh, we and we we achieved that with 1,400 orders, 14 uh, orders from 1,400 customers from 48 countries within wow. the first nine and a half hours. Because I met the founder of Indiegogo at uh, the Startup America Lounge with with Dell at South by Southwest, and oh. it's really changed the kind of the paradigm of how you. Roll out products because you're venture back, but you necessarily didn't have to go through Indiegogo, but you're using it as a feedback mechanism. Is that how? Yeah, we did user feedback. That was it. Very. So if I look at the sensor, what is what kind of data does that throw off, and, and how how do you, how is it used? It's, it's very simple. You know, it's measuring activity, and mm -hmm. it gives you credit where credit is due. So whether you're um, walking or cycling or swimming. Okay, you can swim in this. It's waterproof. I think it's the only one of its kind that is waterproof. Um, that and basically it gives you uh, activity credit. Basically, it tracks your motion, and then that way, and it gives you instant feedback. You know, mm -hmm. um, and tells you whether you've hit your goals for the day or not. Um, at the end of the day, we felt that we people, you know, we can report steps and whatnot. Of course, you know, anybody can do that. But we felt that people didn't want to know. I think people want to know more than just how many steps did you take. Mm -hmm. They want to know how well am I doing. Yeah, it's not. It's it's how do you quantify everything, and how, then what should you be doing? Right, exactly. And then what are you going to do with that information, like you were saying? So in your conversation with Ariana and and, and Deepak <laughs> at the pre-conf call, uh, what were some of the topics that you guys are going to cover in the super session that that you're really passionate about? You know, uh, a whole bunch of things, and, uh, and, I, and honestly, I, I felt like the smallest person on the on the panel, but that's okay. You know, we we're, we're, we like to be underdogs, but you know, the um, the thing that we're most passionate about is user centric design, like truly user centric yeah. design, uh, and making no compromises on product design. Um, we've been pretty good at it so far, and we're going to continue with that commitment, and so. You know, the thing that's fascinating about this session is it's the only session on healthcare related things. You know, like other stuff is on like the new flat screens and me new media yeah, and yes. technology, right? Yeah. This is the only one on healthcare. Yeah. And so it's so exciting that uh, everybody. conference would be interested in that. Yeah. Cool. So looking looking kind of in your crystal ball for twenty thirteen, what are the what are the breakthroughs that we're gonna see this year? You know, um, that's a good question. I wish if I if I knew that, I would uh, maybe I should be an investor. You know, <laughs> but um, I think one of the things we'll see is we're definitely going to see a lot more in the wearable space. Like I think people yeah. are excited about the space. They see promise. You know, I mean, if you think about it, Tim, we had the PC revolution in the '80s, the internet in the '90s, the mobile revolution in you know in the 2000s, and now in the post PC era of tablets and cloud competing, where else is technology going to go? Yeah. And I, one area where it'll go, will be on our bodies. I think you know, what are you going to do? Buy another iPhone or another tablet? No, you're good. Yeah. You know, you have your your laptop, your iPhone, and your tablet. What are you looking to get out of this conference? And if people want to connect it with you, what what are your desires? What are your goals? You know, I think one of the things is where working at the hardware layer, trying to get data off of people. Mm -hmm. I think something I would love to get out of this is to have a better understanding of what people really will use this data for. Okay. Like how can it really be made actionable? A lot of people talk about making it actionable and 
so far, I'm not convinced by many of the solutions out there, to be honest. Really? You know? So still uh, in the greenfield space? It just seems a little too... Uh, I, I don't know. Nothing's been proven yet in terms of use of the data. I mean, like, charts and graphs, is that really what people want? And of course not. Yeah, it's like... You know, yeah, it's like, what are you going to do with that? But And so people talk about insights. Mm -hmm. Okay? But that's hard, man. Giving really useful, actionable insights at the right time, in the right context, to the right person, hard. Okay. Well, hey, I want to thank Sonny Vu, who's the co-founder and CEO of Misfit Wearables. Thanks, Sonny, for your time. It's going to be so cool to see you at the end. <laughs>